My name is Andrea Goforth, and I am an Associate Professor of Chemistry at Portland State University. In my research, we make nanoscale materials that have chemical and physical properties that are different than the bulk scale materials. So a nanoparticle is something in the range one to 100 nanometers. Your human hair is about 100 microns in diameter. So the particles we're making are less than one thousandth the width of a human hair. So a, a nanoscale material is simply a larger object that you take atoms away and whittle it down until you have just a very small collection of atoms. I got interested in nanomaterials as a very circuitous path. So I was really interested in color and I was really interested in the interaction of light with matter and how that produced color. And it was really awesome to me to be able to explain how that worked. So I got fascinated with color and how that pertained to molecular structure. And I was also really interested in synthesizing new materials. In the nanometer size regime, there one can really exploit the size of, of the particles and the colors that they absorb and emit. So began working with semiconductor nanoparticles that display what's called the quantum confinement effect. So as you shrink the size of the nanomaterial down, further, they'll begin to emit light corresponding to the color of that particle in the visible. So instead of absorbing, this is now emitting, returning that color to your eye. But now I had a new way to work with materials to get color, which was simply by changing size and getting good at making things that were all the same size was a good challenge. The nanomaterials I study are special because they emit light, so fluorescence as a function of their size. So the smaller the particle is, the bluer the wavelength of light that it emits. Conversely, the bigger the particle is, the redder the wavelength of light that it emits. The nanoscale particles we make absorb visible light and emit it, re-emit it at longer wavelengths that's dependent on the particle size. It's useful in several ways. One would be for biological stains that you want to follow a molecule attached to a nanoparticle through some sort of biological process and you can use the light that it emits to follow where that molecule is going. Just of my Burroughs Welcome Fund project was to develop new nanoscale imaging agents that are visible with an existing medical imaging technology. And so there were three types that I really thought about doing. We can do fluorescent nanomaterials for optical imaging. We could do magnetic nanomaterials for magnetic resonance imaging, so MRI imaging. And we could do high X-ray opacity nanomaterials for X-ray imaging. You can add a biological targeting group to the surface of those nanomaterials that you think might be involved in a biological process that you're interested in studying. Once administered to the biological system, that molecule on the surface would participate, we'll say, in its normal chemistry in the biological system, but it's attached to the nanomaterial, which you can use as a handle to follow that molecule around and see what it does. Most small biological structures are not x-ray visible. But if you can target a nanoparticle to those tumors, say by adding a molecule on the surface of your x-ray opaque nanoparticle that recognizes a protein on the surface of a cancer cell, so you would be able to use the high x-ray opacity of the particle to locate where these little tumors might be. Right now, for x-ray imaging, the only contrast agents that are clinically applied are non-specific and they're non-targeted so they're not sent to seek out a tumor pathology. So mine would be specifically targeted to an area of the body that one wanted to image. I think serendipity has always been a really good friend to me in my scientific career. You really can't build your career hoping that serendipity will work out for you, which is that you need to have good questions and good hypotheses, but always be willing to be observant, pay attention, and, and like see what the experiment gives you. And sometimes that results in things we're not expecting at all, and those things that we're not expecting at all can be cooler than the things that we were hoping for to begin with.